I'm Craig Erickson. I'm a professor of psychiatry at Cincinnati Children's Hospital and the University of Cincinnati College of Medicine. I'm the director of the Fragile X Research and Treatment Center in Cincinnati, and my work really focuses on translational medicine and new treatment development and neurodevelopmental disorders, specifically and primarily in, in Fragile X syndrome. I originally was trained as an autism trialist. I worked with Chris McDougall at Indiana University, who was a real leader in autism medication management. And around when the MGLUR5 theory papers were coming out, I was a resident at Indiana University and, and we had a few folks doing autism and Fragile X was there as a niche and uh, we were very excited as a single gene disorder to move new treatment development into it. We thought it would be frankly easier and quicker than working in idiopathic autism. and. Uh, uh, Chris McDougall and I got on a call with uh, Mike with Fraxa and uh, we talked about clinical trial opportunities and, and my first grant was still as a trainee and it was to study aripiprazole in Fragile X Syndrome, which we did. It took a while to do a monotherapy, no other drug study and that's really the only antipsychotic study in Fragile X and it's really informed the field and so Fraxa got me started in what I do in psychopharmacology and Fragile X. And, and since then, Frax has been very supportive in different ways. Christina Gross, who's a uh, Fragile X basic scientist at uh, Cincinnati Children's Hospital, and Ernie Pedipati, who is in my division, he's a psychiatrist, and I've worked with him for years. We've really worked together, and, and they've led the way on looking at gene therapy options in Fragile X and using what's called an AAV, uh, gene reactivation or gene editing approach. It's a mechanism that's been used in other conditions and FDA approved, for example, in spinal muscular atrophy, which is a severe lethal neurologic disorder where folks have treated uh, with this viral vector technology and the gene editing occurs, essentially can live and they would have died in infancy. So the question is, can we take the same mechanism to take a functional fMR1 gene, bring it into a viral vector and then get that virus to enter essentially brain neurons uh, to express the protein. Because we get asked all the time, why can't you just give the protein to people? I've been asked that my whole career. And you can't get the protein to the right area inside of cells. So that's essentially what this does. The virus, which has been made safe and edited, can enter the cell and then replication for the protein can occur. So that grant is really going to continue to move that forward and we would like to take the viral technology in the mouse and see what it does to correct EEG or electrophysiologic deficits that have been demonstrated in the mouse that are consistent with human findings. So we're really big in building these strong bridges that what we test in an animal is extremely similar to what we can test in a human. So if we move forward with gene editing strategies in humans with Fragile X syndrome, we would want to be able to have the right assays to determine early treatment response. And I think that funding and that work is, is gonna move that forward.